development is yet another demonstration of how this project will enhance the quality of life for those living and working in the Windsor, Detroit area. We want to visit your wine country. We want to spend our dollars here. I can't tell you what an exciting moment this is for our organization. Ladies and gentlemen, the Gordie Howe International Bridge will address the future needs to meet the anticipated growth in traffic at Windsor, Detroit, which is the busiest trade corridor between Canada and the United States. And last year, more than 11 million vehicles, those being cars, buses, and trucks, crossed the border at Windsor, Detroit. And that's over 30,000 vehicles a day. Other than at special events, pedestrians and those riding bicycles have been unable to travel between Windsor and Detroit. This will change. I'm pleased to announce that the design requirements of the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project have been revised to include a dedicated multi-use path that will accommodate pedestrians and cyclists. Today marks yet another step, or should I say, a pedal forward in moving towards the construction of the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project. Last year at our annual public meeting, I said that the WDBA would investigate allowing bicycles and pedestrians on the bridge. I'm very pleased to be here today to be part of the announcement that this is now a reality. Cyclists and pedestrians will in fact be able to bike or hike the Gordie Howe International Bridge. Like Mike Attillo, I also want to thank the various inspection agencies, stakeholders, and communities on both sides of the border for their engagement and for the valuable insight and input on how they can make this project truly the community's bridge. I'm thrilled to welcome you to our little bike hub. We've been building this over the last few months to show how important cycling and walking is it to our community. And I would like to welcome our American colleagues. You know, we, we got together a group of cycling enthusiasts, advocates, and tourism people from across Canada and from across the U.S to come together to create a business case for this initiative. And there's no question that this is not only going to assist those who live in both of our communities, both across the river and on this side, uh, for healthier, more active lifestyles, but this is going to be a destination for cyclists. Cyclists will come here, it'll be a bucket list. They'll come here to ride this bridge, to stop on both sides. Remember, they go slowly, and when they get to where they're gonna go, they, they're really hungry, and they're very, <laughs> very thirsty. So it's a boon. They, they don't want to go for fast food. They want to enjoy the local. So they will want to try our local cuisine. They will want to try our local beer and wine. That's what cyclists do. This is a change in the design plans from the original design plans. Is this going to change the cost or how much does this cost? Do you want to take that, Mike? Um, thanks for the question. And no, it doesn't change the, uh, the cost. Uh, the, the bridge uh, configuration itself was always there. So now we've do, what we're doing is we've just enabled this to, to actually occur. But I think it's important to think we're building this and we're, this is an opportunity for others to connect to it. Uh, for the for the trails that you mentioned, etc. So, we are very hopeful that uh, people will uh, will use this as a stepping stone and uh, connect more trails to it, uh, connect uh, other people to it. Um, but that's so we've done our part. Last question. I know this has been contemplated for a long time, but is this going to add to the timeline for when you get the design back, or have the proponents always had this no, this is, uh, so this, this was in the RFP, so the proponents uh, are aware of it. Uh, so this, this has no bearing at all on the timelines for either getting the submissions back to us or us, uh, or the actual ultimate construction. On this question, but I would assume they have to go through customs and the toll and all that kind of stuff as well, right? Um, certainly customs, and, and we've, uh, we've got some uh, artists rendition there showing how it actually works. So that's, as the chair has mentioned, that's one of the things that we were, we were trying to work through was exactly how we would bring 
in essence, cyclists and pedestrians in and amongst uh, trucks and cars. We want to separate them and still do it in a, a safe manner, but also be respectful of the customs functions that have to occur. That's what was taking us the time to, to sort out. The aspect of whether people are going to have to pay and how much, etc., and, and some of those other things, we will work out in, in due course. What's the situation like in Detroit to get from where the bridge is going to be to say downtown Detroit? Yeah, so the, yeah, the question is how to how will it connect to downtown Detroit and so we have some tentative plans uh, looking at Fort, Fort uh, Street to connect uh, downtown. Um, it's a really wide street with very low traffic volumes and, and MDOT has uh, suggested that we, they could consider protected bike lanes. The city has installed uh, protected bike lanes on Livernoy um, and we're hoping to extend those all the way up to eight miles so we're making these major connections. I also mentioned the Iron Bell Trail uh, is right there as well, right next to the Burge Plaza, which includes bike lanes on West Burner, and connects you all the way eventually to Wisconsin. So, yeah, we're making the, we're, the connections will happen, and, and we do have a little bit of time to make those all um, formal and get those on the ground. So I'm really thankful for everyone for making this, this decision today and moving forward on this.